Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Here we have got Brian's mm, JHS Encore Vintage uh, Advanced Series. This is an AV6, and this is a pretty good guitar. Um, I came across these early on when I started doing Real Love Guitars, and I was mighty impressed by the quality of them. Um, so you, what you have is a kind of top of the line uh, vintage style, a vintage brand neck. You've got some Wilkinson HSS pickups in the um, familiar AV6 style uh, pick guard, which is a sort of court, court-like configuration. You've got a Wilkinson bridge here, which at the moment is seeing all kinds of levels of wonky. Um, and it's a very chunky, heavy guitar. On the back here, you see what also is distinctive about it and this neck fitting um, with the four bolts and the Bubinga extra heel or heel insert to kind of, I don't know, add some extra something or other. Trevor Wilkinson uh, insists that's the business. And we have the sort of Wilkinson, probably easy lock tuners, um, but it's a chunk of a guitar. Is it easy lock? Yeah, double holes on the post. Ooh, what was that? Hmm, interesting. Um, so what we have is we have a plastic nut, unfortunately. Um, and I think the problem with this plastic nut, as with so many, um, okay, let's put the power in this, as with so many, oh, not so many, some of the vintage and encore style guitars, is that I have a horrible feeling that this nut is oversized. Um, so you won't get a straight replacement in there. Yeah, 3.43, 3.45. So really 3.5 nut width. Um, now I'm not sure we're gonna find anything off the shelf, off the peg, or whatever you might like to call it, that's going to replace that but we're going to have to because that's not good enough um so this guitar is in for a setup this guitar is i think i might have to bring down the camera again there's something odd about this guitar in that it's got a really weird finish um it has evidently there's something creaking in here on my my something there's something happening when i move it around that feels odd yeah, <laughs> there you go, my God. Never seen that much movement in anything. Blimey. Sheesh kebab. And that's what's been moving. See, I can, huh, I can pick that up. Look at that, ready? That is terrible. <whistles> okay, well, let's, let's do this in chunks. <laughs> uh, there's quite a bit to do here. So let's first of all take off the neck and see why this is wobbling the way it is because that's the first thing we've got to be clear about um i have no idea it could be these are just loose they're not particularly tightly done up so anyway this guitar is down for a good setup and the, the weird thing i noticed from the outset about it is that you may be able to see here and how the light's reflecting but this this body has been built with a huge let's see if you can find it oh, there you go a huge uh, not in the wood and actually you can if you're looking from maybe the other side you can see the, the grain going all around this knot and it comes all the way through to the other side you can see it there and you can see the lines of the grain following it around so it's an absolute huge knot and it's completely sort of messed up the paintwork so the paintwork is kind of sunken in to the into this knot area not area um so it's and as a result it's like it's never been finished in the polish it, it feels to me like in the factory they spotted this and they just said leave it don't bother polishing it don't bother buffing it this is going out we'll sell it to an employee as a second or something like that so uh it's been i, I think it would have been written off as a as a factory second um well that's interesting and um, Brian has ended up with it. 
Um, you know, one of the questions he asked me was, is there anything we can do about it? And realistically, no, that would have to be, if there was any chance at all, that would have to be stripped back. Okay, that's why. <laughs> Sheared off. Okay, this is, this is the, right, this is, this is the thing I get. Oh my God, I get the fun and, and joy of doing this. Customers go, what's wrong with my guitar? Well, the neck's wobbling. Why is the neck wobbling? Because the bolt has sheared off inside. That's why it's not holding it. Why is the bolt sheared off? God knows, but it's why it's wobbling. And um, now we're gonna have a challenge to get the remains out. So, oh God, I think this is gone as well. Oh yeah, that's exactly what's happened. So the question is, Brian, is who did you buy this off? And uh, why didn't they tell you what was broken about it? Because broken it certainly is, and it's not actually gonna to wanna to come out of its own free will. So we've got two sheared off bolts, which is uh, made this, come on, I need the magnet to come out. If it doesn't come out, I'm gonna to have to use something else. Another magnet, if I can get this one off the wall. <coughs> Come on, how'd you come? Yep, sheared off as well. Bloody hell, look at that. Actually, they, they look like they've been cut. <laughs> I mean, my name isn't Columbo, but. That's been weakened and cut. I'm not, not quite sure why, we'll find out any minute now. So out comes the fabulous, uh, I think out comes the fabulous Bubinga neck, doesn't it? Please, oh my God. Oh yeah, okay, it comes out under, under like that, right. That's right, it's an extension, so you have to take this off as well. Right, let's take it all off. So there's a bit of work to be done here. So let's get the, so let's get the back plate off as well. <sighs> so, there uh, could be a number of reasons now why this is a second. It's uh, the paint job is terrible. The bolts have sheared off two of them. Whether or not we're going to be able to dig out two sheared off bolts in the body of this. And I'm just looking, these screws are coming out looking a little bit rusty as well. Not too bad, but a bit rusty. So uh, wouldn't surprise me that this body was too wet when it was made. Um, and it's probably shrunk, shrank, shrunk. Yeah, yeah, that's right, we've got, oh yeah, of course we know we know it was wet because it's got rust on it. We talked about the rust. So, there's more problems on this, Brian, than you would uh, care to mention. Oh Christ, all right, that's a problem. Okay, I didn't know they were actually, bloody hell, soldered, soldered, welded in place. Let's uh, take them off this way. Okay. So we've got a bit of a struggle on our hands. Oh, Jesus. Let's get, oh, this is a total strip down now. So what's gone from being a setup to a complete strip down because it's got major problems. I think, I've forgotten, I didn't look at the notes, but I think this lived in an attic and was got down. And I think what we'll probably find is that these have either rusted or may well have sheared off as well. Horrible spinning feeling about this. Doesn't want to come out. Oh, it's not sheared anyway. I think we've probably got stripped out holes. If that wasn't coming out, that one was probably a bit stripped. We've got strings rusted into place in the block. So we're gonna to have to do some work on that as well. But these are, yeah, there's, there's damp damage, rusty. <coughs> Tremolo screws. <laughs> oh, there's me thinking it'll just be a straightforward setup. Of course it's not. I remember Brian mentioning that it had been sat around in the, in the rust, or sat around rusting. So anyway, we'll get it all off and we'll take the whole damn thing apart because that's the only way we're really gonna make sense of what's going on and what's rescuable or not. These bloody cut off springs are getting in the way because they're rusted into place. What is stopping this coming out now? Oh, of course it's got the best, got, got, gosh darned 
springs attached to it, hasn't it? So it won't pull out very well. Will it pull out? Can I make it pull out? Holy cow. Bear with me. Ugh. Right, next. Off with the things. God, yeah, this is a, this is a funny old state of affairs, this thing. Okay, uh, we've got rust on the scratch plate screws, I think, as well. Yep. So the danger of that is that they, when they're really rusty like they are, um, they shear off and you end up having to dig them out sometimes, which is absolutely not what you want. So thankfully, at this point in time, they're all coming out. This is an interesting little uh, diagnostic thing going on, I'm finding the things that are wrong with it. Those are loose, that's okay on that end. So, I'm kind of half expecting these screws to snap. Very kindly, it ain't yet. But we do have a problem with that neck heel, a major problem. Uh, not unrescuable. Actually, I don't really care much about that screw since it's Actually, that's about the best condition one of the lot. That one. <sighs> okay. Blimey. Gordon Bennett. Okay, what was that from? <laughs> oh dear. What was that? So, anybody? And we've got a, an idea, it looks like the end of a, a different, an old kind of truss rod. Mm. Right, let us, let us, let us do something. Excuse me, get my face in the way. I think we just need to hoik this out right now. Um, we'll get a close look, let's take, sorry about the view, not very good angle get these out it's rusty of course oh brian oh brian oh brian what a mess okay we'll have a close look at that looks all right nothing toward there uh, ha ha right <laughs> okay somebody's clever solution uh, okay of course I'm looking at this they are hand cut because somebody's wow this isn't how it worked surely that looks did it really work like that maybe I'm maybe I'm am I Maybe I'm, am I, um, is there something I don't already don't know about this? Was this always like, no, this can't be. This has to be a, somebody's made a, a solution to a problem here. Could that always, was that always a bolt? Do you know what? I had one of these and it didn't have that. Okay. <laughs> this was not how it worked. Weird. How did it work? How did it work? How did it work? How did mine work? That is weird. Maybe this is how it was meant to be. It looks so crudely put together. I wonder if this is some sort of some sort of temp, um, prototype that didn't quite work out or something. So these are sheared off, cut off bolts. They go through there. The idea is that they stick on here and these, oh, blimey, these little bits of metal as if they were from a, from a, um, an old truss rod, go in there and this comes up through there and fixes into each one of those. I I've not seen this before. How weird. 
So there we've got, we've got this bit sticks on there like this, theoretically. <laughs> or I throw it away down there, theoretically. This bit goes on here. That's been hand cut, so, or, you know, chopped off. So how, how is that meant to work if that's been chopped? Can I get this to bite on here or is there not enough? You know what, there is enough, let this go on. Okay, well, do you know what? I can't, I can't really fault this if that's what it's meant to do, but I've never seen this. Well, there's a first for me anyway. Maybe that's how it went. The, I'm trying to think how mine fitted on because I had the blue, Laguna blue one. This has clearly come undone. That's one of the reasons why it's loose. But that doesn't mean that it can't be tightened up, which is what I'm doing here. So maybe it is, oh, maybe we're on to a slightly easier job than I anticipated, except this now doesn't feel like it really wants to go in. But it will. I'm charging my battery driver at the moment, so hence I'm doing this by hand. Well, I have to say, I think I think what's happened, if anything, I don't know how, I've never seen that done before. And maybe I just haven't seen this model. I mean, I haven't probably haven't taken this model apart like this, but my Laguna Blue AV6 with the three P90s did not have little inserts like that. This clearly does. And I think what the part of the problem we've got here is that if it was meant to be like this, then these have clearly come undone over the years and hence the neck is wobbling all over the place. Now, that actually isn't the end of the world because, he said, listening to the cracking sound, um, because I think what we'll be able to do is just put some thread lock on there and keep them from going anywhere. It doesn't have to be very strong stuff. Now, I'm just putting these little darlings back in here. Actually, that's, that's a pretty fit fixed neck arrangement. That's just, I've never seen that before in my life. Right, let's do it now while we're at it. Let's get it thread locking up, man. So we'll just undo these, that one at a time first. Well, I'm astonished. We've still got plenty of work to do in terms of sorting out the, um, sorting out the bridge, which is definitely rusted to hell. But let's take this off. This is just long enough, but it has a, it's definitely a hand cut, um, a hand cut bolt, you know, it's amazing. Let's just wrench this around here a bit, make sure we get it well and truly caviar. And then we get it to bite. There we are. How strange. <laughs> Never seen it before. That's a, that's a first. Anyway, it's a good outcome. That's sorted that bit for now. We'll, um, we'll take care of this. Oh, don't want that to happen, but that doesn't matter too much. Um, yeah, how weird. I suppose it's a good enough design. It works. Let's get it gummed up. Right, well, weird things. So we've solved the neck problem, which is great. All right, let's just leave that setting or whatever the word would be. Right, good, good, that sort of. Um, let's just, before we do any go any further, let's just make sure this thing works, because if it doesn't, what I don't want to be doing is investing time and um, Brian's money in it. So first thing I'm going to do is give it some crankings with a truss rod key, a uh, truss rod key, yes, uh, Allen key. I really, what I'm trying to get this to do is bend in a bit of a back bow 
Um, now, those of you who are, oh, who are nervous about the uh, truss rod adjustment, you can see I'm cranking that pretty hard and I'm getting some back bow. Okay, that's fine. So it does, it does adjust in that direction. So now I'm going to slack it off. I want to see a corresponding uh, curve in the other direction. That's now slack and that's curved in the other direction. Good. Okay, so that's positive. Um, apart from anything else, that's not in bad shape. Now, I've got the buffer out here. I could actually shine this up a bit, except I've thread locked this on. And actually, it's never gonna look much better than this. <laughs> uh, shall, I, shall I give it a little bit of a buff, what do you say? If I do, um, it's just, it'll, it'll make it a little bit shinier, but I don't think we're really gonna get very far. Let's have a, let's have a quick look. I, I'll do this, I'll leave the cameras running because this is real life, but since the, since the buffer is already set up in the other room, or you might as well go and do it. And for that, I then might as well take this chap with me. Come along, see you in a minute. Uh,
a major improvement to the oh I forgot, <laughs> I forgot my glasses that's pretty cool yeah, I didn't even notice can you believe it oh. <laughs> well <laughs> that's actually oh god a vast improvement <laughs> look at that that's the joy of having a buffer handy Andy you can really give something a new lease of life. That's a that's a much a great improvement. Wow. I mean, it's got the problem with the heel, uh, the heel, the knot, obviously. But you know something? That's a, a shine and a half. Can you see? Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? That's a, that's a ton better. Right. Good, okay, so we have our neck done up. Let's double check that. Neck, done up, neck, done up, neck, done up, neck, fixed and done up. Okay, groovy. We'll hang that from here for a minute. There's, there's some issues with the edge of this neck, the fingerboard, but I'll come to those if I may. Okay, the reason I have to buffer out is because I was, this is my test piece where I did some, uh, I did some, what do you call it, uh, waterborne poly on here, so can you see yourself in the mirror, some more sort of, yeah waterborne poly um, and I got to buff it out today, pretty impressive. That's, uh, I don't know how many coats, maybe six coats or something, or very light coats, but that's really excellent. Done in these conditions, not flatted back properly either, so I wasn't really worried about that. I was just conscious of, holy cow. <laughs> this has more problems than uh, Brian, I think, realized. 
So we've got a severely rusted um, component here. And I think we'll probably find that the uh, springs and their little attachments may well be uh, irreparably clogged up in here. And also we may have no way of getting the, getting the um, strings out of here that could be the end of these. Now the thing is, these are not that expensive to replace, but you know, it's gonna be a cost. Uh, I have to say though, apart from that, that cost, uh, I think it's not the end of the world. Um, a new bridge on this, bit of buffing, which has brought it up beautifully. Um, a new bridge would be worth it on that guitar as a, as a neck. Uh, the tuners actually are in good neck. They haven't rotted amazingly. So I think it's a, it's a worthwhile chassis to do something with, but I think I think if we if we simply cannot get through this wall of uh, rust inside these holes to get the strings out, then we, we don't really have a lot of options, I'm afraid. Um, but I'll, I'll sort of have a good idea about that in a minute. Uh, so I'm just taking the saddles off and out of the way. I could send some, fire some uh, degreaser, not degreaser, um, kind of loosener stuff in there. but. Uh, whether or not it's going to free up stuff that's corroded in place is anybody's guess. Um, like I say, they're not too expensive to replace these and they're fairly common place uh, bridges. I'll double check the spacing, but I'm pretty sure it's a 54 mil spacing. Well, that's a set of interesting things shown up already. Uh, looking at the neck, on plus side, it adjusts. Um, the fingerboard looks good to me. No twists. Uh, the frets seem in fairly good neck, so they'll they'll level up nicely. So at the moment, everything in its favour. Uh, the Wilkinson pickups are good quality. Um, there's no reason at all why these shouldn't uh, perform well. It's this this is the this is the problem we've got. So those are so those have corroded and rusted into place. Um, these are rusted into place. I've never really seen anything like this before. Uh, we may we may get a bit of movement going, but it's no. That's what's going to happen. It's going to break off more than anything else. So possibly we could maybe drill out a little bit. But that's that's where we're starting from. Absolute screw. I'm not even going to bother trying to drill those out if we can't get uh, can't get out. At the bottom of these, so I'm just going to spray some dirty, greasery stuff. Mass uh, release glue into here. That's the same. I'm not usually optimistic. And now I'm dripping it all over the place. That was clever. So maybe it's going through. I kind of expect that. So that might be a, might be a good sign, you might say. Uh, and we're going to sort of hope and see if we can encourage things to go all the way through. So, yeah. Hmm. Okay, let's do something else. Oh, no, I'm afraid, I'm afraid this is... No, this is sheared. That's rusted in place. No, it's not going to... It's not going to do it. I think we're looking at a new bridge. New bridge. I'll just clamp it in there. Uh, right, see if I can persuade it to move at all. I don't think we're going to get anywhere. The trouble with a, a thread, if it's if it's rusted in place, the thread will not uh, behave. Well, one of them's come undone. That's pretty good. It's no good if three don't. No, that one's just mashed, I'm afraid. 
And so is this one. Uh, no. That's what we're gonna, not going to get there, I'm afraid. Too rusted. It, it, the, the picture that um, Brian kind of gave me in the first instance was uh, of something with a bit of rust here, but what we didn't know was that these are soldered, welded into place. Uh, this one, I shan't stand a chance of getting this one out. I, I wonder, let's see if I've got a, one of these reverse chamber things. Uh, I don't know where it is. Quid. It's cost, it's going to cost more to try, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, right. So, what are we going to want to? Hmm, drill out, flip bit. Extract. Well, let's try it. Let's clamp it in here. It'd be kind of amusing to see if it, if I can move it. If I can move it, move it. But hey, at least we know what we're up against. That's about right. Is that the right size? No, it better be this one. darn things out. So the idea is you shoot this one into there first to drill it out and then you stick the other one in and you drill it and out it comes. That's what they say. Try it. Well, that's cheap Chinese crap for you. Just uh, gets very hot and makes some smoke. You never know, it might work. Let's see if it has, stands the slightest chance of doing it. Damage screw extractor, yeah, right. Flip bit extract. Well, that ain't happening. I kind of think it, it's as if it needs something more to grab hold of, um, but it's not getting it in respect to this. Hmm. No. It's going absolutely nowhere. Drill out, drill out, drill out. Nope, it's 
not doing it. Hmm. Hmm. That wants to cut that way. Bizarre. The picture that comes with this is so poor that you wouldn't make out what the hell it was trying to show you anyway. No, nope. it's, it's putting up too much of a fight. Um, Rusty, rusty. Mm. Um, the only other option I've got is to get make a cut in there, but it's going to cut across the. Even if I get a, a slot, it's going to cut across there. So I think I think we just write this off as a they're dud. They're dud. So let's uh, let's not waste any more time on this. I'll, I'll keep them in the pile of stuff. We will have to do something with, but I think we need to get an order in. Um, in fact, I'll put all of this. In fact, what we also want, we'll get if we order another one, we'll get proper screws um, because these are rusty, so we don't really want to use those. In fact, we don't want to use any of this component, these components again, so they can all go in the I don't like you box. Um, that's good, that's good. And uh, just take a quick look at this in a minute. Uh, there's a little bit of cracking there, but it's not the end of nothing serious. So everything here <coughs> is okay. Uh, I suppose the other bit we have to just take on board right now is what we've got in the way of nuts for this. Because if we, if we have to make a custom one, that's an absolute... Royal pain, sorry. I have a feeling that these will be too narrow. These uh, tusk replacements always, almost always start off just a fraction narrower. Not than regular ones, but these are uniquely wide in my experience. So we said, what, 3.5, 3.2, you see? The only way this is gonna work is if we find a way of um, buttressing it. Um, now sometimes I have a fair bit of leftover material and I can, ah, I've got some spare tusk. Okay, so I can make one up and I can, there's a bit of tusk material there. It doesn't even have to be tusk, but I've got the tusk material. So with this, I could thicken this out and then we take it back down. We do it on the back end, actually. That's the way to do it. So that's one possibility. I think it's the best option, to be honest, because Carving one out of a block uh, means we're kind of back to square one of having to use files on the slots. And the whole point of one of the major points of fitting a tusk nut is precisely so that we don't have to um, stick, uh, cut the slots with, with kind of rather crude, raggedy files. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to stick this this block of tusk to the back. This is left over from, I'm actually not what, sure what that was. It was a tusk nut that I cut down to size prior. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the flat side and I'm going to glue it and clamp it to this edge of this nut and we'll shape it down so that we end up with this, the, basically the same nut with a little bit of tusk boot on the back. And it's, it seems like a lot to add on to it. Um, I've got a couple of different pieces here that I could use. I'm just gonna try and find the most appropriate one. Uh, that's the exact, actually it might be this one because that's the exact right width as well. Yeah, by about a millimeter. Is this the right width? That's a little shorter. What about this one? That's a tiny bit. Why is everything really a tiny bit shorter? Okay, that's the match of size wise. Okay, spares. Put them over here for later. 
So the first thing will be to get this glued to here and then put in the clamp, put clamped in the vise more like. So what we're going to have is we're going to put it on the, the back end edge. Um, so we're going to go flat edge, which is the best way. Is that going to be the best way or that way? It's going to have three holes in it. That's going to not. We'll go this edge to this edge. And we're going to end up sanding back quite a lot of this. So that's how it's going to go. Now I'm better off overhanging everywhere slightly before it sets. That's what I want, a bit of, bit of overhang because I can afford a bit of overhang and I'll sand it back when the time is right. So there's my bit of overhang built in. Now what I want to do is get it in the vise with a bit of a helping squeeze. And uh, I could have some Blue Boost accelerator, which won't harm me to throw on there while we're at it. This stuff is ridiculously expensive um, and tends to be, it's, it's, it's kind of meant for repairs using the Blue Boost system, but let's see, uh, I think it's glued. Okay, I'll just leave that in there for a couple of minutes. So that will just be a case of um, bringing that piece down to size. And the funny part is, uh, it'll be 0.2 of a millimetre difference, um, but it will allow me to get that in there uh, nice and firm. Uh, whereas I, I wouldn't be able to do that right now because it's, um, it's going to be too loose as it stands. Too loose, which is terrible because you can't get, you can't do with a too loose nut loose little trick. So I'm just going to get my small hammer, knock things over, give me hammer. And here I is going to just knock off my nut. So I'm going to get a bit of support under there. Now strats have a habit of breaking off the metal, the metal, the wood that's just the other side of the nut. So it's kind of hard to Avoid that. If it's going to do it, it's going to do it. But I'm trying to do it as gently, as persuasively as I can. Okay, that's not bad. As it comes without any major damage. Now, what I've got is this plastic nut for reference. Um, horrible plastic nut, I should say. Let's have a quick look again. So 3.4. Um, but as I say, the, the tusk is about 3.25. So we're about 15 or 20, 0.15 or 0 0.2 of a millimeter short um, or too little. And that would cause a horrible amount of lean and it's just diabolical. Now it's interesting, what I'm seeing here is that it appears that someone's already cut the nut off this or there's a, there's a score, a score line, score line, score line. I'll show you a close-up. It's not trademarked, it probably is. Close-up. Oh, let's use the zooming thing. See that? Look, a telltale saw mark. All the way through that slot. Mostly clean, but that's not right. Somebody's cut too far on something. Uh, would that be in the factory? Maybe, but... Who knows? Oh, anyway, I'll keep on, keep on recording. So I don't think we'll get too far tonight because I think we're going to have to do it. Where's me zoom? Zoom back out. Thank you. I think what we're going to have to do is order a bridge or to certainly talk to Brian and be, get ready to order a bridge. But on the plus side, as I said, this is in all senses. Yikes. Oh dear. That's not good. That's, that's messed up. Man, that's messed up. Well, the good thing is, is because it's a wide, extra wide slot, we do have 
a lot of room to move this little file in here so we can get a sort of leveling going without too much trouble. Um, question about this is would we want an adjustable nut or would we want one to fit in? I have, I don't know. I can see that this is raised at the edges and bowed in the middle. So something wasn't right with this slot either, which isn't, but I can't imagine that an owner has taken, has sawn off an original nut. They often, I, these were often bl uh, black on the, certainly on the, the Indian encores and some of the earlier vintages, they were black nut. I can't imagine somebody will have sawn that off, which is sometimes why you might find the, the score mark um, and then put on a plastic nut. There's no improvement at all. So, uh, but it's definitely not completely flat because this, file is telling me there's a gap in the middle there. Now it's probably not that much, um, but it's definitely there. And you can see it's not cutting the middle at all. So anyway, that's not such a big deal. Um, we can we can sort of just slowly wear that down and kind of use the chisel to make sure we've got a dead straight slot. I actually, don't, I don't feel that is too bad of a slot. Uh, let's just drop uh, another so like a customized tusk nut in there from another area. See that would be its normal width which would be rattly as hell. Um, now just putting in that in there because it's dipped in the middle if anything it makes it sit fairly well so it's a problem when it's humped in the middle and that's when you get the, the nut rocking from side to side which isn't what we want but as it stands that's not too bad. Okay well I'm going to, I think this might as well kind of draw this to a close. Um, I suppose the thing I haven't checked, and again, it's one of these um, game changer things. These are all, these are all in good condition. That's quite surprising. They're in good shape. Um, I don't even think there's much in the way of rust up here. So something kept that safe. Um, the neck is nicely fitted now, which it wasn't. And we've got quite a bit of pizzazz and shine. Oh, what I was going to say, and I'll do the check and the pickups in a second. What we've got on here is we've got a strange overhang, could even be a separation. Now, I, I once dropped my AV6 on its face. Um, and when I did that, what happened is the fingerboard sprang off um, and it, it resulted in a, um, well, I had to glue it back on, first of all. It wasn't a major deal. I glued it and clamped it back on. But when it went back on, it had this, which is a, a, a little lip. And this has got it in both sides here. And I think this fingerboard has been off before. Now, the only way to overcome that is to um, sand it down. And if we sand it down, then the only other thing we have to do is to go back and slightly refinish, uh, to put some fresh um, poly onto the edge. Now this is slightly stained, so it's difficult to get rid of that lip without taking the color away. Um, in that case, you then you have to put on some, some tinted, and I can see it there, but it's, a, it's an unpleasant little step. And I can see the you can see the glue that's under there. So it has definitely been off in the past. I don't think it's I don't think it's still loose or anything. But I think we we'll, if we if we take this back, I mean it's a horrible feel. So if we take it back, we're going to have to build build this up again. I don't mind doing that, but we'll do it with some some tinted poly. Um, but it, it'll it'll make this thing feel much better than it was because. Now I'm kind of, this is now personal with this guitar. I want this to play and feel great. I don't want it to have this badly stuck on fingerboard. Um, so we can just, even that is nearly, nearly back to where it should be. But it was the thing I noticed straight away is that I, that's what the result of dropping mine on its face was. Um, and it could be that something similar has happened to this fella on the, in its lifetime. Um, and the, the poly finishing 
to tint this and, and just build it back up is, is not a problem. But I'm, I'm kind of determined to do it with it flush so that it feels, you know, really good. And I found that out at that time that it's nigh on impossible to reattach the uh, fingerboard without getting a lip in the process. Okay, that's nearly right. Mm, nice. We'll do the same on this side. Um, telltale signs, there's a dent there. Um, yeah, yeah that, that's, a, that's quite an overlap there. That's almost almost into scraping with the knife territory there. Um, but yeah, it was a it was the first thing I it taught me that if the fingerboard comes off in the in such an accident. Well, what it told me was that the when you have the fingerboard glued to the underlying wood, if you stress it like that, that what happens is that the forces uh, ex kind of express themselves by breaking the seal or breaking the joint um, between the fingerboard and the and the. Uh, God, is can you hear it? That's quite extreme. So yeah, it, the, the forces or the stresses are shed by the fingerboard breaking free. Um, so that was kind of not surprising because you know I let it fall and I let it f fall on its face in the garden. I stupidly leaned it against a hammock, which was blowing freely in the wind, and the hammock swung around and the and the guitar fell off forward onto the grass. And you know there was a sort of boing, and I looked and the whole fingerboard was disconnected. So. Um, I immediately sort of in horror, I got my clamps out and I thought, well, oh, I'm in the business now of fixing things like this. So isn't that convenient? And I got my tight bond glue and uh, got it all lined up and so on and uh, clamped it and glued it and clamped it. And But there was not a chance that I could get it flush like this. And there, there is no chance that you can do it. Now, this is, this is now beautifully smooth. And, and now that horrible little edge is gone, but it's uh, you know it's taken a bit of uh, the colour with because they they make these look vintage by guess what painting them with amber finish, so that's how they make them look aged. And um, so as soon as you have a repair like this to do, you will lose the uh, the colour because it's very thin. But like I say we we've got some amber stain at home which we can add back onto this. So I think I would probably take this home tonight just to do that part of the, re the repairing over the next day or so because I think what we'll need to do is we'll need to obviously check in with Brian about the uh, tremolo and go from there get his say so on it. So while it's while it's at home and presuming assuming he wants to go ahead there you go that's nice. Let's fix that that's really that's really got that back to where it should be. Good. Okay. Um, it's, you know, for me, things like that are much more important than, you know, even if we couldn't match it up colour-wise, which I think we'll get some way towards it. Um, but even if we couldn't, I would say that a smooth finish like this is infinitely better than um, that horrible step that you can feel every time you handle this guitar. Um, anyway, so that's good. All right. That's that done. I'll put this in the case for now because we'll take this home and do the, the, the poly refinish on the edge. I've got poly at home. I've got some amber finish at home as well. Um, and what I'll just want to do now is check the pickup outputs to make sure that we're carrying on to invest time and energy in this guitar, that, it's, uh, that the pickups are actually producing some output. And our way of Knowing that is to, let's get hold of the signal, the wire to the jack plug. Bing, vacuum later. Okay, so this is our, that's, um, there's a blend pot there, uh, which is the, which is, I'm not quite sure, what does that actually do on this? This takes the, okay. Uh, so it's a blend pot. Well, wait a minute. Is 
this actually joined to that? Yes, it is. Okay, so that's grounded to there. The top bit, it's grounding. All it's doing is sending this, the coil split signal to ground. That's interesting, isn't it? So that third button splits the coil progressively rather than a single, you know, on off. You just roll it and you go more or less humbucker from single coil to humbucker, but progressively. That's what that little pot does. The, uh, these these AV6s had quite cute little wiring systems. The, um, the 3P91 had a kind of rolled, that had a similar thing that rolled them off from uh, stacked to single coil. Okay, well, I'm getting, at this point in time, output from the, output from here, I'm getting nothing, which is not a very positive sign. Oh dear. Oh no, thank goodness. That was must have been turned off then. Okay, 13. 13, that's in bridge position. Uh, bridge and, sorry, wrong side. Bridge position was 13. Uh, middle, 6.7, neck. What did you say, 13 on the bridge? Well, watch what we'll do. It would be easier if I could connect this. Hmm. Something is seven, but okay. That feels a bit iffy. I don't know whether there's something Something is touching something, I'll to double check for that. So interestingly, if we go to the, um, if we go to the bridge position and we turn this the other way, that bridge position will, should go from 13 to about seven. There you go, seven. Turn it a little bit, go to about what, 10? Oh, straight to 13, that's interesting. It's got not, not much, um, seven to 11. to 12, wow, that is wide open. Sorry, 14 is its full kick, but that is that is wide open from barely past the uh, shut off position. It starts at, it starts at, at seven right there on the wide open, 7.2, and you only have to do the tiniest thing and it's on, it's on, 11, 10, so it, it's, it's, it's all or nothing-ish, but that's good, they're working. So I'm happy with that. And the blend pot, well, they call it a blend pot, but it's a progressive coil split, that's what it'd be. So that's working. Okay, meanwhile, this has been home. I have polyed up the sides and a little bit on the back. So I've built up the sides with some poly. Now I'm going to sand it back and uh, the word is, <clears throat> Why I wool it out because to go with that, to go with it, to go with this guitar, we have now got a delicious replacement Wilkinson bridge. Which actually, I was going to say, should be a perfect fit, but you know what? <laughs> How about that? This isn't actually a perfect fit, and um, interestingly, I'm not sure this was a perfect fit. Could it have been? Do you know what? Even that isn't a perfect fit. How strange is that? I've got holes all over me. So there's something about this that doesn't really want to fit full stop, but obviously I've got some new, new tremolo screws too. So I'm going to take a good look at this and see what's, what, if anything, is the problem. Um, and actually what I'll do while I'm at it, I'm going to put this in now just for a, a sense of how much more is going to be done to this to make it work, this, this tremolo biz. Um, okay, so nicely charged up, I would say. Um, yes, a man is mighty chuffed that he didn't lose his fingers. So I came, well, the funny, funny thing I did was, as soon as I had the accident with it, I carried on. 
I bandaged my fingers and um, made myself continue on. And in doing so, I got the uh, I got the sort of job done, or what I was trying to do done. Um, but I think more importantly than that, oh, there you are. More importantly than that, I got the uh, I overcame the sort of terror because I was immediately frightened to death of. Oh, that's great. How did you manage to get that jammed in there? Frightened to death of, of carrying on, really. Um, brilliant. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, scared of carrying on. So uh, making myself do it is a bit like getting back on the bike after falling off. That's interesting. This is a this is not not a very good goodly fit um, best at any time of day. Is this a, is this over, overall? Uh, that's why it, that was sitting up, wasn't it? I have a feeling this is a, a pig's ear. No matter what's happened, this is a second. Um, I don't think this was ever meant. No, this was never meant to work. So it's exactly the same tremolo as this, and that's the first thing you'll notice is it does not work as a tremolo. Very interesting. Why is that? Well, it's hitting the back for a start, so that isn't going to work. That means it's technically too close to the back uh, to begin with. Now, let's do something before we go any further. Let's get a, a scale length line on this because if this is, if this is, that explains why this was sitting the way it was because it was not. It was kind of jammed in in some sort of way. So this is not right. How weird is that? I find every stage of this to be slightly knackered. Well, it's not a problem. As long as the scale length is right, we can create more space for the tremolo. But I just want to Brian to know that it's not about the tremolo itself. It's the same as the previous one. And it's, I'm pretty sure that would have been the one with the guitar. I can't think of any, uh, I don't think I've seen a, an AB6 with anything but a vintage tremolo on it. But something about the fitting here is wrong. And this is this is a, an identical block, same footprint on the back. It may be, uh, what is it? Is it slightly longer? No, it's not even longer. It's the same depth and everything. Um, same gap at the back there. Absolutely copy. So this doesn't work with that. That's interesting. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double check uh, Oh, now, where did I put my nut? In all the excitement the other day. Oh yeah, here's my, I have to, I have to file that down still. So that won't work for the time being, but let's have a dummy nut for the purposes of this. So what I want to do is I just want to measure the 648 scale length, or double check the scale length, and see if this, um, these bridge post holes are even in the right position. Um, because, yeah, well, who knows, eh? They should be, you would think. Okay, so let's just double check the length 324 to the final, to the final, to the 12th fret. And I would say, sorry, camera, <clears throat> 324, so 648 is the, the full scale on this. Oh, oh God, oh, go, oh. oh. Oh dear, <laughs> I have a feeling, I have a funny feeling about this. I have a feeling this is a total factory reject. Hmm, <laughs> mm. interesting, okay. There's the scale length mark, it's right on the cap. Oh, holy cow, this is, this is impossible. This is a total screw up. Well, how about that? Who would ever have thought that? Mm -hmm. Right, there's my edge there. I'll use this just to follow the edge. Um, that's a total, total misplaced bridge for a start. So every, everything wrong, everything seems to be wrong about this guitar. So the bridge cut is in the route is in the wrong place. Can't run any kind of tremolo with that that mark there. Let's just double check it. See, hundred percent on the safe side. Six forty eight. There we are. Spot on. Uh, now that would mean for this to work, first of all, for this bridge to work, it has to be forward to that position there. That means I would have to go back 
my goodness. <laughs> well, we can solve this easily just by making some new holes, but to, to make this work, I would have to go, that's a good position for it to be in. Uh, well, no, we can't make it work. <laughs> we can't make it work without routing Right, at, at a position in which the bridge would actually work, <clears throat> which is here, to, to make it work as a tremolo, I would have to push the saddles back from its high E position, another five millimeters back, which would mean there'd be no adjustment room on the low, on these bass strings. So the only alternative to that is to keep this where it is, if we can even do it, and we have to go backwards and still we have to go back further than this is even allowed to go well 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 what have they done they've done have they done something to this is this neck too far in they've done something now because of the way hold on a minute no thank you this neck is too far in pushing everything that way. So this could have been pushed forward that way, but that's about the right, correct gap for this type of guitar, because I've seen it before. Um, for this to work, we'd have to go further that way, which means you'd have to have more holes in the back here. That wouldn't work. If we came forward that way, there'd be nothing for that to grip onto. We'd have to extend the neck heel, which we can't do without taking that whole section off. Hey. So the only possibility on this is that we take this whole thing back by five millimeters and we can get rid of this lip here, but I'm not sure that's going to be enough. Um, oh, I don't know, maybe, maybe, you know what, maybe that is about, I can't really measure it very well, in fact I can't measure it at all. Not, not without, you know, putting something together that I know is a certain width. What have I got that I know is a certain width? That's approximately that width. Come on, Samuel. Well, I suppose I could make a piece of card. Um, all right, let's, let's fake up some sort of measurement device. Right, well, this is a this is a major screw up on the manufacturer's part, I can tell you now. Um, let's see, is that what we think it is? We think it's about that. Let's start over to begin with. Okay, that's a bit too much over, so let's do about there. It's actually about there. I'm, I'm just, I'm sort of guessing this. I'll measure the, the end piece in when all said and done. So that's a bit too much. Yeah, an absolute screw up. Okay, that's the, that's the width we can go back, which is, as it happens, well, let's call it six. We can walk, walk back six by cutting that out. And if we go back six, Thank you for that little piece of temporary sandpaper. So if we pull this back by six, we have to work out whether this hole is going to expose itself at the front. That's the main problem. Ooh, sorry. We can go back six that way by cutting in. Accepted, accepted. Yeah, 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 right. Good. Um, yeah, so we're going this way. What we don't want, obviously, is to end up with this falling out. But also, um, we... Am I trying to get my head around? If we go back six that way, well, let's transfer the hole. I'm going to have to mark it up. If we, if we go back this way, we, what we don't want is these, we don't want it so the anchor holes fall into the cavity or too close to the cavity, in which case you won't get any purchase or strength. So there's our edge there. Let's measure six mils along here and sort of join it up. So this will be cutting off the overhang on this edge here. It's the only way we're going to get it to work. So this will come up to there around in a corner. And this will come up to there and around in a corner like that. It doesn't have to be accurate or perfect for just now. And we'll draw the, connect up the six millimeter marks like this. Okay, that becomes our new back of the pocket, which will place us up against there, 
but then it will, if it's up against there, it won't allow any further movement that way, will it? What an absolute disaster this is. Okay. Um, we're not going to get these back to that line, are we? If it's a hard tail, and we'll get it back to the line just. In fact, if it's a hard tail, we can take some of this down. We can get it back to the line without the bridge looking unnatural. Um, <sighs> the only way we're going to get this to operate as a tremolo bridge is to route out an extra huge chunk here. And that's going to take time and effort. Um, I know that Brian isn't particularly a tremolo user. <laughs> and it's kind of offensive to my sensibilities to um, to not have it operate, to fit a 35 quid bridge and just use it as a, well, I mean, it's a nice solid platform, right? But, you know, but the problem is what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to do, uh, I'm going to have to put a, a, tra uh, a template on the back, route it right the way down until it pretty much comes out of the front. Um, oh, we can, we can put one on the front, but that's probably... So we're going to go, the problem is, what I'm trying to work out, is if we if we are able to go back to that point there, what we've got is our screw, I'm looking at it here, to get it to work, in, and that means we have to have a lip here, six mils there, and a room to swing. That is putting these holes practically in the hole itself. Now, my concern is if I were to... Where are they? Where are the original holes? Let's just mark them out a minute. There they are. So the original holes, even if we do it as a hardtail and make the guitar just beautifully playable, which I know we can do, but um, it's just the tremolo problem. If we, uh, if we go to there and we're going to go, we, so we can't go there. We've got to, oh, we'll have to go back. So all right, we'd need to fill these. And then we, what, how much further would we need to go back? We'd need to go back from that line. We'd need to go back another. It's not actually that much, is it? Um, original place. There's the original position. We would need to go back three, just to be on the safe side. Three mils. So that means we've got to have three mils between here and here to, to sit strongly in the What's it? That stuff would, without any danger of it breaking through. But on the plus side, the six screw tremolo is a, it takes, it sheds the weight, sheds the load pretty evenly across all the six screws. So we don't really have so much a problem there. But this would be the line we'd have to drop these new holes on just to work it as the correct distance um, hardtail. Uh, that wouldn't have been usable as a hardtail anyway, because we can't get the strings out. So that's that's history. This is just a good quality hardtail bridge now. Uh, and I think, when we look at the gap, I think we've got enough to do. We'd have to fill these, redrill these. Uh, I can't even move it back just yet, can I? I've got, to, I've got to, still got to take this back section off. Um, but the question is, will these... If I do that, will these appear out the front? Because right now they are here, aren't they? No, they're there. Okay, and that block is up against there. We're going to go back six mils to there. <sighs> this is probably going to potentially three mils. It's possibly going to, these might just be underneath the front lip of this. But that's all there is to it. Wow. Yikes. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the first one. Um, I'm going to make it level with this one. Perpendicular, I should say. That's at a three mil, three mil separation. There's one. And there's two. My two, my two centers. I uh, can't even check it this way, can I? Without being able to go backwards. Let's just make the tiniest impressions there. And there. Okay. 
You can see the tiny marks. Okay, so that one. That's interesting, isn't it? Is that in there? I can't I can't even check it until we're in there, which is just annoying. So okay. Hmm. So there, there is literally no way with this route put in this place. The only thing I could do to save this guitar is push the neck out that way, but with all this complicated shebang here, um, really, uh, there's no way of, um, there's no way to anchor these back bolts. They would have to be lost, and then they would have to have more bolts here, which would be ridiculous. <sighs> so they've, they've basically screwed it up completely somewhere in the factory. So that's what this has been, a complete catalog of errors put away as a, chucked out as a um, second, basically. So an alternative to this um, would put, could be, uh, let's have a look. We could go, just give up with the bridge concept and we just go hard tail. Um, I don't really know what we've got kicking around in here. I mean, if we had a, a straightforward hardtail strap bridge, which have probably got some ugly looking things in here somewhere. Oh, no, I needed to keep those out they were for some reason. Okay, well, here's, here's a. When you're playing with your fingers, rustling in boxes ain't so much good fun. Right, here's a, a standard strap bridge. See, the problem is you put one of those fellas on and we've got to go backwards from there. Um, we've still got a hole and we've got holes showing. There's no, there's no way this is going to work. So the only way this guitar is going to play decently well is to take this out, this little bit back area out here um, line up. I'll tell you what I, I probably will need to do now, which is again, this increases all the time involved. Let's get all the saddles off. And let's just work with the footprint at the top for the time being. Okay, so one. It's a, it's a, it's a pity, but this, yeah, it's funny, isn't it? You get a guitar that's just a complete catalogue of nonsense. I mean, this is definitely, somebody's messed this up so badly in the factory that they've just, I don't know what they've done with it, shipped it out, thrown it away. Somebody's picked it out of a skip and taken it home and sold it on eBay. Um, but it is an absolute disaster. There's no way that would play with any kind of known tremolo bridge in there. It's, it's in the wrong place, which is often I talk about that happening, you know, a little bit, you know, you get sometimes a a factory slippage, you might call it. Rarely do you get one as bad as this, but this is, and there's no way I could have known that no, without assuming it was wrong from the outset, which of course you don't really. I mean, why would it be five millimeters in the wrong place? It's not just a, a hardtail bridge that's got a problem that you can you know, mount it and move it somewhere else. It's uh, the whole route is put in the wrong place to accommodate the bridge, which makes it pretty much unusable from there on. So if I just look at the footprint part um, and see if we can just suss out what's possible and what isn't. Um, you know, what I don't want to do is commit to anything if we've got holes sticking out everywhere and the thing just looks lousy as well. I think pretty certain that Brian will live without the tremolo function because he's going to get a guitar out of it that plays. Okay, so the, so the problem I've got is if we bring it forward now, we're going to, we'll just miss having, in fact, I ought to put one of these back on. We'll, we'll just about miss having the original screw holes showing um, out. Uh, what we won't miss having, and we'll see, is a, the corner of this route here will show, but there's absolutely no earthly way around it, unfortunately. Complete. Okay, what I will do is, while I'm here, I'm going to put the marker back on here. I'm just going to know where I am.
I really didn't expect it to be that badly out of kilter. I know, it's, <laughs> I know where it is now, I don't have to go, oh, is that right? Yep, yeah, that's right. Right up next to the edge of the, the route. Yeah, put it in cross light. Well, if we, <laughs> I, don't, I don't particularly even trust this, the, the pa parallelness of this, but it doesn't look bad from there, so that's, in the right place. Okay, so if I mark me up some more bits around here, oh, I've got blood from bandaging myself up the other night. <laughs> Kitchen roll and green uh, frog tape, that's your first aid of choice. Okay, so we're going to get to the actual oh, yikes. The actual line now. Let's get the original holes marked up again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to mark the centre of these holes rather than pop them through. I think. And join them up. Not always the case that the holes follow that line, but they should do. Okay, there's my centre marks. Oh, and let's do across the top so I know the positioning. And again, if I'm going to end up doing this, I, I don't really even want to trust the uh, alignment. We haven't seen it with strings on. We have no idea how badly that bridge is out of place in any direction. So I think we might as well start by assuming it's out, in which case I would want to use the bridge itself with some guide strings to mark the new center line. But yeah, my I'm afraid my decision on this, my executive decision on this, Brian, is if you want a guitar out of it, um, we're going to have to. Uh, ay, ay, ay. We're going to have to um, scrap the original idea of having a a uh, tremolo bridge. I'm afraid. Okay, so here's a here's a sort of mark of where this now falls. Um, I've only got this fine thing right. So the, this is now. We are going to see the original holes, I'm afraid. This is the way it's going to sit. If we're going to make the, um, well, okay, let's, let's, this is one positioning we could have. Let's just reconsider. That's one positioning. Um, if I were to prepared to bring in the high E to there, we could go further in and I think what we might just do is get around the, um, yeah, we may just avoid showing the original holes. So it would look like this. Should I have a little pen? Handy? Yeah, I've got one. I'm not one. Have a quick look. Actually, I'm not sure this is now level. Actually, before I before I commit, to, or not commit to it, before I put that on, let's put the low E on and let's just estimate whether this will get there without any straining. But I think it, realistically, the only thing we're going to get this done with this is a hard tail. It's going to look like a tremolo, um, but it just isn't going to work as one, I'm afraid. Um, the only alternative would be somehow to fill in the uh, original route space all together but then you you have a great big wooden block sitting there um not not really doing anything it would you'd be visible it'd be pretty ugly okay so we can go to here to here that would be enough millimeters away let's just mark something here see what we've got in terms of parallelness Okay, we've got 60 in there, that's a bit of a slope, so that's the, uh, so, uh, this is this, so this is the center line, right, yes, that's okay. Um, so, so those weren't, didn't even start out particularly level according to the back edge of this, but who knows, on this body now, who knows what is what. The only thing I could do to stand any chance of, I was gonna say I could take a, I could take a neck center line, down here. That's possibly the only thing I'll be able to do on this guitar using a laser, but 
God only knows where it's going. Send in the laser. I keep an eye on my watch to know the clock thing. I, an hour before Mark comes around. Okay, so laser beam time. Now this one, I'm gonna to have to just trust in the center lines of the dots. Um, that's not the most accurate way to do it. Probably it would be better to mark off halfway points down the uh, down the um, uh, frets, but I'm, uh, I'm happy with that, happy enough with that to be a center line on here. So I can just keep it still and double, no, it's moved. <laughs> okay, turn the line, turn the line, turn the line. Do not move any further, please. That will do me. Oh, let's do the front one, which of course is there. So all we now can say is this is a, excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze, this is a neck center line um, for what it's worth. <coughs> now that that is sort of useful in that if that's a neck center line, then what I can probably do is mark off a front edge let's let's make let's do one let's just do one uh, what do you want to call it that thing right let's call one of them there and then let's try and make a, a square edge from there according to the center line there's my mark there's my Neck center line to hell with what the pickup routes are doing. Okay, so there's a straight line, bring it in line, readjust it again, line it up 90 degrees. That's about right, tilt it. Okay, yeah, so the uh, something's off the line. Let's make this new line the front line. And that should technically be the center line of my screw holes. Now, if that is the center line, that means I can, looking at it, I'm on the 648 line. Okay, and I'm still far enough back from there, that's good. Um, it would be great if there was no block, but unfortunately there is, because then we could still use it. Um, but as it stands, the block will not, almost certainly not lift up any distance on that. I'll do one more check, but okay. So, <clears throat> with regard to placing things, that's my my line that's perpendicular to the center line. Okay, and I'm going to just line this up now. I'm assuming, um, it's a bit of a stupid thing to assume. I was assuming that this would lead straight through and we could do a test of straightness which is a bit ham-fisted. Uh, the nut is not stuck down, so it's going to move. Unless I stick it down and tell it to behave. Stick and tell. See, this is definitely non-standard work now. This is rescuing a, a complete pig's ear. Right, that's sort of okay positioning on this outer edge. That's not Whatever that's doing, that's within there. That's not a bad position to be at. So I'm confident side to side position is, is good enough to work with. So what I've now got is a start point on the left side and we've got a little gap and we're going to follow this darker line. What I could do I suppose is draw around it with a reasonably sharp And miss the bit of paint so we don't draw on that. Tuck into there, over the top of those. So that would be our position and our center lines, our center marks. It's actually quite difficult to um, quite difficult to draw into there. So what I can try and do is get the lines scribed as accurately as possible 
what I'd do in real life is I would drill and pilot holes and fit the first two outer ones and um, get the bridge stable. That, that moved, idiot. Get the bridge stable before um, drilling through, with the, um, drilling the holes through with the bridge in place. So that gives me my center points and I'm just going to mark them up freehand because I can see, I get a better idea of when the points are in the middle when I do that. And that's about good. Okay. Now that one almost overlaps the original one because the original line was off at a slant. Can you believe? Honestly. Well, now actually, you know what? The original line was in line with the back part of the pocket, but that isn't straight. It's center lined with the neck. So we want the bridge straight center line with the neck, I think. That's a, probably a better bet. Okay, so there's my thing. So now if I put back on, Let's just put one on for a minute. Hang the uh, block on the back off of, off of here. I mean, I've, you know, it's, no, it's not the end of the world. I've got a, my favorite strap is a hard tail with, damn it, uh, is a hard tail with um, a full weight block and it doesn't do any tremolo work at all. Um, it's a similar reason that the body isn't wasn't built for it, and so it's not really big enough. The whole the route isn't really big enough. But okay, so that yeah, I mean we're we are now going to be too far back to get any movement at all. Even if uh, even when we take this this little bit off the back here, which we're going to have to do. Um. So, how much do we need to take it off? Well, if we're going from the distance between these two pieces, the first one just about sat on. So we're talking about, let's measure it. We're talking about three millimeters at least to be on the safe side. I don't know, maybe, okay, three. Let's, let's go three. So we're gonna take off three at the back of here and that will be, create the room for the bridge to go backwards with the block on it. So three and three. Yeah, and it's just one of those things. There's no way it's going to work as a tremolo, not, not because of anything I can or can't do, just because when they've made a mistake this fundamental and routed to that mistake, then it, we, we're stuck. We can't do anything extra with it. It's uh, you know, its fate is sealed by the factory, unfortunately. So we're going to get rid of this. And we can do it with the um, with the Dremel, or we could do it with the rasp. Either which way, it's a bit funny to hold. We can't clamp it anywhere. The rasp, you have to hold the whole thing and sort of grind away. But it will let us it will let us move, um, you know, remove a fair bit in one go. And we're basically just going through the hole here. So. You know, not a not an easy thing to do. We can stand it up like this and just go. Here we go. Now, you know, we'll try and preserve the paint and the edges of it, and use the small, or the lighter edge of the rash. A bit of an angle to help it. Switch to the heavier one. So that causes split off on the back. You don't really care too much. getting to pretty much where I want to be. I'll smooth it out. So 
So just as a, a quick sort of physical check, um, obviously it's going to catch in the corner, so that's not going to go until I've, um, it's nearly lined up, but I've got to get the Dremel in there to tidy that up. Oh, and the Dremel's doing service elsewhere as a router at the moment. That's okay, we'll come back to that. So yeah, big deal, unfortunately. But it'll play, I'm determined that it will play as a very nice guitar. Just won't be doing any tremoloing. Okay, so I'm gonna plug it in, switch it on, and use it by hand. Sorry, wobbles. Okay, switch it in, turn it on. looks very slightly off um, primarily because it was lined up wrong with the center line but heck that's nothing new there right we're back in position that's where we want to be now actually you know there's, there's still no way this is going to work as a tremolo even at the tightest squeeze and the only way it would work as a tremolo at this point if we were able to is we'd have to we'd have to cut out some more material here a bit more. There'd have to be a route down from this top section, cut in quite a distance. Um, depends how far how far it actually moves from them to. Let's just, oh, where did it go? Let's see if we can simulate it. And then it would be from. It would be from. It's a bit of a bit of guess, but there. It's a long, it's a lot of routing. That's got to, we have to route all of this out. I think it's, I think it's a no go. Um, from down, from the top downwards. Um, but then the problem is, that's why this typically has a, a lip because um, if we routed it down. We'd either hmm. the, the, normally it, it routes from the back, so we'd have to do the same again. Actually, we couldn't do it from the front. It would have to be all of this from the back, um, and it would have to end up. That route would have to end up being. Well, it's got to be more than we just moved because it didn't work before. That was the problem. So it would have to be. You know, who knows what that? I mean, I don't have the measurements to know what that swing actually converts into but what would it be it's, it's could be a, it could be a centimeter of swing in horizontal terms and that means we would have to go um, back in here to at least the line of the plate it might just we got it all about there we might just get it but that's a massive route to do for somebody who doesn't use the tremolo normally uh, and that would add hours of work. I think this way we can fill the holes, drill the new ones, place it in, and this now will we can get back to where it should be. We've got a little bit of bleed, a little bit of hole showing here, the route, but that's nobody's really going to get upset about that, and it will play like a nice guitar. Okay, I'm going to uh, point a centre a centre hole on all of these spots. Oh, that one, that one's too close to the edge. So is that one. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, of course, they're going the other way, aren't they? Eh. Right. I 
think what I'm going to have to do is fill these first because I can't really place any more holes while these are in place. Right, rule number one, take these off, uh, sorry, fill them, um, cut them back, and then we'll get lined up for what we can do. So, more time. Cool, is it? How big are these? They're all slightly too small. Well, who done that? Now that gives me a problem because now I have to drill a wider hole to. It's not, it's not good. They're slightly too big, the holes, which means they go larger and further. Six mil dowels somewhere I had. Yeah, that will just go in. That would go in with resin. Let's do resin instead. That will at least keep it rock solid. Won't go anywhere. Yeah, let's do that. Oh yeah. Yeah, they're not even lined up. These holes. <laughs> Oh my lordy. Well, you don't expect this to happen, but then, you know. Not a lot you can do, really. I'm just covering up as much of the finish as I can, just so that if we get any spillover on resin. I mean, normally we wouldn't have to do it with glue. Glue is very forgiving and you can just wipe it off. But with resin, it's a different matter. So to ensure that this doesn't end up clogged up on there, we need to just make, um, need to cover up the paintwork as much as possible. This feels frustrating actually, because I want you to be able to just get on. So now I'm going to try and cut some little bits to block off. And I'm just doing the freehand because there ain't not so much time in the world left. That's not bad. Oops. Okay, so what I'll use is uh, I'll get some clear uh, two-pack lacquer, lacquer varnish. No, resin is the word I'm looking for. Um, I'll just use that every sort of 20-minute setting business, half an hour setting. Um, and I will use that to, just to fill out, pack out this dowel, which is not long enough, really. Um, but they're not long, it's not wide enough, but we don't really have a lot of choice because there's no, the holes are a bit ragged and big. And they're actually are slightly of varying sizes, which is even more perplexing. So I'll just get six of my little filler bits. Right, we'll get up a bit of leftover plastic in order to Work up the resin, mix it up. Quite difficult to get resin to go into a hole 
as narrow as this, so we might be fiddling for a bit to get it locked into the hole. But even if it's basically just enough to um, sort of pad out the, it might even just be enough that we, we cover the, uh, what do we call it, the dowels in it, and that probably be enough to be going on with. Um, so, okay. don't really need to do anything to the ends of them. So we could either try and mix this up first and get it cleanly blocked into the holes, but that's it's going to be quite tricky because it's very thick. Um, but we can have a go. We've got the tape in the put in the way, so we can catch any overfill or spill. And hopefully some of it will kind of sink down into the holes. Let's try. Get in there. Fill it up. You know, you've only got a certain amount of time to do this as well, obviously. So it's more time than you always think, but get in there. Because it forms a sort of an air pocket and then of course it won't go down very well. So I've got some in there to begin with, and as much as I can. And if I've got plenty in there, what we'll find is it will come piling out as soon as I chuck the wood in after it. So if we just put some on the wood as well, we should be all right. So that's that out of the way. So first one, give it a quick going over. In we go, let it stick. What I will do before any of this sets, I will probably just cut, clip the um, piece of wood back so we're not dealing with great big, great big timbers sticking out here. But those don't even go down very far, so the, the holes are the holes are variable in their diameter as well. Some are thinner at the bottom, some are wider at the bottom. Knock the um, stuff will go down in there, fill it up as much as necessary. I'll get the um, cutters, side cutters. Let's give these a little, little helping tap. That's not, that's not even how, how filling holes normally goes, I have to say. Um, still, it'll be the best I can do, and we'll just get it flush in a minute, or as close to flush as we can get. Let me get some more tissue. Now, we want to get as much of this out of the way as possible so we don't end up having to cut through this when we can trim them back. So a little, a little thin layer would be okay, but not a very big mountainous blob. So I think that can be left to set and get rid of this. Um, somewhere to put it in there. Right, yeah, uh, after all of that, we're back kind of at the beginning, which is slightly annoying, um, but ultimately it will be fine. I'll get this bridge fitted, I'll, I'll drop, um, Brian a line and tell him that that's about all we can do with it. Uh, and 
and then we'll go from there. So we'll just have to wait for another video, another day. Okay, well, this was a good start off. I suppose I better do a quick fly in with the close ups because that's what this is all about. Da -da -da. Yeah, so I don't tell you much, you could see it from the other one. Uh, what I can do while this is, or just shortly after this is dried, what I'll do off camera is I will just sand back and um, wire wall out this refinished back, or back, mainly the side edge where, where, the, um, where I uh, sanded back the overhangs on both sides, which were really <laughs> another reason why it was a, a factory second. Mm -hmm. Anyway, okay, see you in a bit. Okay, it's another day. Du, du, du. Right, it's another day. And, um, yeah, well, yesterday we didn't have too long because I had to, I had to meet with Mark and get some guitars and head out and do a meeting, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, um, but yesterday I did come to the conclusion that uh, we were going to have to live with a hard tail for this guitar because of its peculiarities and its weird factory rejectness. Anyway, the point is, um, I've, I've also, in the off-camera time, I've made a nut to, to this guitar. So um, we can now, actually I won't string it up just yet. In fact, I'll take it out, will I? Take it? No, it'll stay there. Yeah, so I've made an adjustable nut. Um, and this, this was a challenge in itself because the, the slot on these guitars, the nut slot on vintages and a lot of encores from, especially from the Indian, God, that is a huge hole in this guitar. Um, they're, they're very, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, non-standard, so they're wider than normal. So I had to kind of boost a tusk nut with, by adding a slab of tusk to it and filing it very, very carefully right back to add the 0.3 of a millimeter that it needed. The, the amazing thing about nuts is, is that they, even the slightest amount of difference and they kind of fl rattle around like crazy. So you have to get them right. Um, and so I uh, basically um, bit boosted this one up. And so we've got a, we've now got a, a nut that does the job. Now I'm just, what I'm just looking for at this point in time is is it still too tall? I think it is. So before I go any further, I'm going to take this nut out of here. I'm going to, oh, I just love, <laughs> I've done it again. I've put the, uh, the little hex key somewhere in the midst of all of this stuff and promptly lost it because it's nigh on impossible to keep track of it on this color. That's my stupid fault. I've got one here anyway, but I'll have to find somewhere else to put it. Right, I'm just going to take out these grub screws for a minute. Um, because I'm going to need to take down the overall dimensions of this nut. It's too tall. I need it to sit in there and for the strings to sit. Uh, stay there. Aye, aye, aye. I need for the strings to sit flat on the first fret. Now somewhere a minute ago I had a box. Right, fiddly little things that are going to get lost can go in there before they get lost. Anyway, I don't know um, how well this shows up, but you can see the little thin extra skin of tusk that I've added to this nut. Okay, so what I'll have to do is I'm going to have to work this first, and then get it into place and then stop and then we'll string it up again. So I've got to take some down and I've got to do it nice and flat and my thumb is killing me from injuries the other day so this is just hoping to get it nice and square edged 90 degrees sort of thing if i haven't got it then i'll roll it forward a fraction to get it So I've got to 
tip this towards me and smooth it out. perfectly flat because basically we end up lifting it up anyway so I think that will sit in there nicely um, come on now so everything as you probably can guess now everything about this guitar has been a challenge I mean everything it has been a major challenge. Everything has been clearly um, rejected at the factory somewhere along the line. Quite how it got into someone's hands and out to eBay or wherever it ended up is uh, it's anyone's guess. But I don't think I can control that one any further. So, um, we've now got a very slim nut that's going to go sit, its little feet are going to sit in some little grooves I've made there, which are, locate the nut from going side to side. Um, and that will keep it in place and then we'll just basically raise it up to meet the correct first fret action. So we start on strings flat on the deck really, which is my usual start point, my target. Okay, it almost loses the little key again because it's invisible. There'll be another one knocking around here. It'll end up on the floor when I brush everything down. I go, oh, there you were. Right. So the idea is when we're using an adjustable nut, I, we, let's just check this is actually already correct. Okay, well what we do is we'll just take these down, completely down to the ground so that the string will sit as low as it possibly can until we do a little bit of winding up. That's really all we're after. Okay, so this is, I'm putting on basically um, sacrificial strings here. So I haven't seen this guitar with strings on it yet, so I don't even know if this is going to work. So straight from the go, let's try it out and see what we've got. We could find the neck has to be shimmed. We could find all manner of problems. And with this one, I really wouldn't be at all surprised. Okay, string, actually it's not too bad. String is sitting in the right place. Um, let's get on and load these up. Again, these are, these are to be thrown away, these strings. So, um, I'm not really that bothered how they go on, but just good dabbit, dabbits, good dabbits die hard, good habits die hard or something. So I'm sort of putting them on as if they were new strings. I um, don't even know if actually we'll get all the way through with a high E. Often we have to kill a new packet of strings for that, but hoping we won't. I've ordered a ton from, what's that place called, Toman, just to um, stop me wasting good strings for sacrificial purposes. Okay, that's what we're expecting, the thing to be sat on the ground, strings on the deck, or strings on the uh, first fret. Um, so yeah, no, no tremolo functionality, I'm afraid, um, courtesy of the the most craziest of um, misplacements of the nut, sorry, of the bridge. Um, as to why, we'll never know. It's just how it was. Um, I, I've got a feeling that they gave up on this guitar once they saw the uh, the big knot in the paintwork. Although, you know, I think Mark, Mark said to me last night, well, why the hell did they even start painting it? Because I could have seen it on the bare 
wood. Um, so the answer to that is I have no idea whatsoever. But clearly they did paint it and then maybe they didn't spot it. Maybe they, they just, maybe somebody sprayed it with um, primer or something and they just got stuck straight in. Um, and it was only afterwards that somebody figured it out. But either way, not great. So, so the plan is just to make it play as well as it possibly can now. So it's got, to, yeah, it's been quite a challenge. Um, all the screws were rusty. The whole bridge was rusted solid, as you know. Um, I mean, it, 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 there goes my string. Holy cow. So I'm not actually going to be able to load that up. This is going to cost me another set of strings. <coughs> beyond cheesed off this. I mean, the difficult thing here is, is that uh, Brian took the strings off um, in the first place, which I don't think these will work, these will be too short, but uh, he took the strings off, which is kind of what I really need to keep on so I can do the sacrificial string biz anyway. Uh, I suspect that this isn't gonna work. I'll just try one little thing and see if I can get anywhere near it, but I doubt it. Uh, in that case, what I might have to do is if I can find one, I might put a B string in instead of the E, and we'll just do it with that. Because I've got a broken packet of strings there, but I'm just, I'm not gonna waste another five quid's packet of strings. This guitar is taking me, taking me far. Oh, you know what? We'll just get through. It's, it's just long enough. Well, let's not worry. Good. I didn't think we would, but we have. Okay. We'll survive. We shall survive. I mean, it might not, might not stay attached too long before it snaps, but we'll see. Come on, then. There we go. Um, the question that Brian asked me was, with these AV6 guitars, um, why don't they have string trees? And the reason they don't have string trees is that the angle or the drop behind the nut is much more extreme than on the strap. So it's one of the Trev Wilkinson design things. You know, he's a he's a, a sort of legend of guitar design, and you know, he's the guy behind all of the best, all the very best aspects of the. Um, the vintage and encore improvements, you know, from when they, you know, when they made them into a, a much better budget range of guitars than they originally were. Um, and so he designed into these guitars lots of little innovations, and that's one of them. Um, it makes it look a little bit different from a tr traditional strap, but uh, you get you get a good break angle without the need for. Uh, without the need for um, string trees, you know, which are which are always a correction of a, a problem that in many ways shouldn't be there. Um, okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm just dialing in the, the kickoff action that we want for the strings to play. I'll drop that in there. I'll get rid of all these spare strings because I can't do anything with them. Um, okay, well, amazingly, we've got strings on this beast. So you can see that one, my sort of next target for this is to get it to play. See if we can get it to play before we do any um, rigging up of the electrics and so on. Okay, are we running, we've got power? Yes, we've got power. We've got power here? No, I forgot to switch it on as always. Thank you. Idiot.
Okay, so this is the very first time I've been introduced to this guitar as... Well, strings, springs, thrumming away like crazy. Um, yeah, right, okay. So now we've got to check the action on this and see if within the geometry that it's currently got, whether we can get it to the sort of ideal playing action. Looking at the way the, these uh, saddles are standing, I think we should be able to get there. The only downside is if we have to lower too far, what you find is you end up with uh, the, those, those things called grub screws sticking in your hands a bit. But you can fairly simply overcome that by buying a short set, which they make for them. Okay, 1.5 fraction over. So it would be probably a good idea to get some, some of these little low ones. Um, we're about just about bottomed out and at the action that I would like. Um, 1.5. We'll do the same. Oh, okay, we've got, uh, we've got the bloody things. Good old Trevor Wilkinson. So what I've got is I've got the things mixed up. So we've got a short one on the E's, short grub screws on the E's, and I've got the saddles mixed up. So it's probably just about easier to um, take these off and switch them around. I think we've got small ones are on the outside there anyway that's right so it's one of them's the wrong way around yeah. right so so far it's looking like it's going to play okay um, geometry general geometry wise which is good uh, not too not too worried in any way. So that's a that's a one less thing to worry about. So really, once I've got these this, the basic setup right on here, then I'll go into the fret leveling side of things. And then once that's done, and I'm happy with that the frets are all in good shape and we're ready to go, then we can put the electrics back in, give it a polish up, get ready to restring it. Um, yeah, we'll be good to go. So 1.5, just over, right, that's just under. 1.5, please. This is a, I think it's a 9.5 radius, so we can't, we're not in the lowest territory in the universe, but it should be pretty good. 1.5 down a bit. Over. So we've got lots of interesting things going on. I've got uh, Andy's washburn down there. I don't know if you can see it, but there's this 80s looking, maybe 90s washburn. It might be, not even be that old, but it looks fairly old. That's a lovely old beast. And I'm converting it from a left-hander to a right-hander, even though he's a left-handed individual. He plays right-handed, so he needs me to convert an actual left-hander to an actual right-hander. And that's only because he loves the guitar so much. So the first thing I've done tonight off-camera is I've made up a rosewood insert and put that into the original slot. And then I'm going to reposition or mark a new slot going in the opposite direction. And then I'm going to need to set up a little jig on top of the body and route a little slot three millimeters wide across the top in the opposite direction at top of the bridge so that's going to be interesting um, i've done a little trial run on a spare piece of wood and it's not impossible at all to do it so i'm looking forward to doing that and then really it'll be a case of giving it a buff around because it's a bit grubby at the moment get it cleaned up and uh strung up One of the things that uh, he wanted me to check was the, the little pickup 
and the pickup is uh, functioning. But the problem is it's, um, it's so feeble. It's a kind of flat piezo disc thing in a little box. Stuck underneath there. Um, and it's not like a piezo element, which we could put one in. The other problem is I'm going to put a bridge doctor on it um, and at the moment that little piazza is in the way so we might have to move it anyway. Um, and I think that um, Andy felt that it wasn't working at all which is a testament to how feeble it is. Good. Positioning of the bridge, great. Even though it's slightly di different from the original position, that's where I want it. Hurrah! I'm pleased with this. But maybe we should have a little close-up fly-through since we've been leading well all over this guitar for the last few weeks. Um, right, so what have we got? Bridge in its new place. You can see the gap that we're going to have to live with now because of having to push the bridge back about six millimetres. Um, what, what you can see from here, if we line it up just about right, um, you can see that the string balance is great um, and it's slightly better than it was before. And you can sort of see under there, you may just about see the original holes. That's as far back as I could go without them showing under the, at the front. You can still see them a little bit. It's the best we could do um, and still get the distance we required and should be able to intonate it. There are those weird 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 things but here we have up this end the beauty of the slightly booted can you see it the thickened extra extra thickened tusk adjustable nut the difference between that sitting in there and rattling or it's sitting sitting in there and being snug is you know 0.25 of a millimeter something like that it's an incredibly tiny amount um, so you know, it takes a lot of work just to regain that little bit of thickness on the nut um, so it doesn't kind of rattle all over the place, which would be terrible. An absolute horrible thing when the, the nut's tilting. Okay, well, so something I'm going to just do here so I don't end up cutting myself. And that is, um, even though these strings aren't going to stay on for long, I'm going to get rid of these bits because I know me and I will have more blood flowing if I leave them on there. So they are going, <clears throat> no matter how short a time they are staying on here. Ding. <clears throat> right. So I now have the guitar set up the way I like it. What I haven't checked, final check, will be the neck relief. Um, which is actually reasonably high, so we could afford to take that down a bit. Um, you may have noticed, um, <laughs> well, of course you noticed, it was obvious, but I showed myself doing it. But the, uh, the amount of overlap on these edges was horrible, so I've taken that away too. Um, so now the point here is I'm going to want to flatten this neck a little bit, remove a tiny bit of the relief. Um, which is tricky because I don't quite know what I'm dealing with here in terms of... Okay, we don't know. We have no idea. Let's, uh, let's think of what I've got. Uh, 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 uh -huh. is, is that a four mil one? No, it's a three mil one. Where's the four? Where's the four? Is that the four? No, that's the four. Let's see how easy it is. Now, I think I got this plugged in before, and I did, because I tested it. Well, that's right, I was on, I was in slack mode, wasn't I? There we go, tightening it up a little bit. Yeah, I put it very much into slack. So let's, let's put a bit of pressure on it. Actually, there's still quite a lot of curvature. But we, shall, we shall give it a go and see. Yeah, so, 
Now that's, you know, it, it, I've built it up again with some poly, but you can't quite ever um, get back the original color match perfectly um, because they stain it fairly crudely. It just comes off if you sand it even the slightest bit. Okay. We might have a tiny bit of movement this way to go, which is good. Um. <sighs> oh, I can't use that finger. Okay, so the question now is, that's a little bit low, so we need to raise that fraction. But the question is, let's play all the notes and see, um, check that everything's playing uh, and see what notes aren't, if any. Third one there. but a couple of spots. Yeah. Right, it's a good candidate for leveling. There'll be no trouble at all. We shall level that out and again, don't switch off power. We shall regain our movement without a problem. Um, the power is flickering. I need to know where my phone is in case it goes out to get all together. That's my only power source, my only light source, I should say. So I mark all this up now and just get straight on into leveling these frets and we'll clear up a bit of the fret wear that's on the lower frets. But that's not a priority or a prime reason for doing leveling. The prime reason is to free up the um, bent notes. Bent notes! Um, and clear the, you know, the uneven frets and getting rid of any uh, where on the lower frets or anywhere is a bonus really. It has to be extremely bad to do it for its own sake because I don't think most of the time even quite significant um, grooves in the frets are really mostly cosmetic despite in fact we might, not, not, might not like to live with them they really are almost entirely cosmetic. Um, and a, an amazing example of that is um, Brian May with his Red Special, that, that thing has uh, an incredible range of sort of grooves down there in the lower frets, actually all over it, but, um, and he, I don't think he's ever even dressed them out yet. I don't know, I find it hard to believe, especially when the, the zero fret gets notched unbelievably quickly, but I guess it's um, it's never affected the, you know, the, the way he plays, which is an amazing thing anyway so that's a that's pretty good so uh it just goes to show that it's it is largely cosmetic and it's, it's very rare that it gets in the way of how things play so i don't consider it a worthwhile trade-off to sacrifice the life of your frets for um just clearing up some cosmetic grooves that don't really 
interfere that much in the play. Okay, so I'm going to calibrate the Stumac U channel file. Um, yeah, so I've got the uh, I've got the the wood, the rosewood insert that I cut and shaped to fill in uh, Andy's acoustic bridge over there, um, or for fill in the saddle slot. So I've got that inserted and glued and clamped and setting. Um, and once that's done, you know, I'll have to figure a way to mark up, just mark up the new bridge saddle going in a new direction. Um, and I'll, I'll sort of be able to reproduce the angle pretty well. It's, it's not that complicated to do, he said. So just looking at this, quick re revelation is there some, somebody's leveled this somewhere in the past, um, but there's a very high fret there that's been leveled. Um, I can tell it's been level because there's no way I've put that flat spot on it just now. There's some very low ones here. So there's some considerable inconsistency here. Um, however, it's only important insofar as it interferes with play. And that no longer interferes with play. So we can kind of call that done at that point. You don't need to push that E track any further. So I'll go straight onto the B track, follow that along. And again, what, what you find when you do it, this method is that it very quickly reveals the flat spots that have already been done historically um, before you got it. So whenever it's been leveled or worked on, it'll suddenly show up and you, you'll get a shock because you'll think you've put that flat spot on it and, 10 seconds of leveling. That's good. Now the thing I want to check here, and I haven't really got the fingers for it now. Oh crap. No, I can't do it. Okay, we've got some whizzes and chokes up there. So it's really the G track now is the critical one for um, freeing up any bends. So I'm going to now concentrate on that, on this run as I do the G track. So I recalibrate every time. Um, I need a little bit more curvature. In my experience, I found that it's slightly better to have slightly more curvature than slightly less. Um, it's better if you cut a little bit in uh, with your curve, then you don't get reach in there at all. Um, and the differences are so minuscule that you really hardly can tell the difference in terms of the actual volume of metal. So I'm sort of doing a bit more kind of pressing down at this end here with the tool because I know there's a, a bit of instability or unevenness up here which is causing that little choke out. Um, I think we're going to redo this with nines, pretty certain. Um, well, I can't bloody bend these. Freed them up anyway. Uh, you're gonna to have to forgive me. I can't do it because the fingers are had a little um, altercation with the router, and this one's got a split right down there from the blade. So I'm in a bit of a bit of a state when it comes to fingertips and whatnot. I'm just grateful I can carry on working on this as I as much as I can, but I can't really get the big bends going. Okay, so we're moving across now to the D track, and I'm pretty confident that this is all, all going to work out very well. Um, as I say, I'm not going to concentrate on getting rid of any grooves down there. If we get rid of some, then great, so be it. Uh, if we reduce some, that's good. Uh, if we leave a little bit behind, then that's fine too. I don't, I don't think it's a fair exchange. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to make that trade off. Good. It's going well. It's good. It's not a lot to do. A little bit, but not a lot. I'm kind of just tidying up some little inaccuracies. Possibly 
It has, this has been leveled before. It has been undoubtedly leveled in the traditional method with the neck flat um, and the strings not on. So the, the neck won't have been loaded. And actually, it, compression, once it's loaded the strings, does change the position of the, of the uh, frets. So it may well be picking up that difference here in this sort of finishing this leveling off. And I'm sort of going a little bit harder now on the the E and the E track because they've picked up a fair bit of a little bit of fret slap on these two, which is quite common. Um, it, it tends to be on. Look at that. Only there. Third up there. Yeah, it tends to be on the E and A that you get this problem with fret slap. Um, it's because the, the strings are thicker and at certain points they need a little bit more room and they're very intolerant of any unevenness at all in the neck which causes the frets to sort of get in the way of the strings and they, uh, I've discovered over time that the banana file is brilliant Ta -da! They're getting in there and clearing that up even though it's not technically a low or, or high fret. It's not dealing with it like a high fret. It's dealing with the whole shape. Uh, so um, it's kind of, I said this on the previous video, but I'll say it again, the curve on the, the, the truss rod, the banana, ends up being slightly more idealized, more perfect than the actual fret, or the actual shape of this slightly bumpy, under compression, imperfect neck. Um, and so, that, this perfect curve sort of maps itself onto that imperfect uh, neck curve and sort of cleans up some of the uh, some of the little bumps or little clusters of bumps which raise the frets a tiny bit higher. And in doing so, it, it gives back that little extra tiny bit of room that the frets need to move. Tune, that's not the point. So we've got a really good, really good um, neck of frets here. to um, take these off, do the crowning process, recrowning or reprofiling, turning the frets back into the shape. Don't cut the power on me, please. I got things to do, man. Okay, so when you're taking off your strings on your adjustable nut, take the outer strings off first on both sides, leaving the A in the sorry, the D and the G on, la uh, take them off last. The reason for that is it holds the nut on this nut, this nut unit, the, the adjustable nut can come off, of course, and probably won't on this one, this is a good, good fit, but it can come off. Oh, don't cut me out, power, this is not good. Um, anyway, <laughs> that would be a bit of a downer for my, my, um, business prospects. I'm a very definitely an evening worker and, and losing my power of the evenings would be a bit disastrous. Right, let's chop these off. You've done your service. Thank you. Toman's spare cheapy sacrificial strings should arrive soon and I will revert to those. Come on.
Come on, don't you come, all of yours. All of yours, I said. Come on. Thank you. Right. One of the reasons I fought for this guitar so much is because I know how good these um, these actually are. Uh, well, the neck and the playability on these is usually great, and and the pickups are good because they're Wilkinsons. So as a as a feel, you know, the whole feel of this once it's done will be, you know, it'll be well worth having saved. But it has, as you can tell, it's been quite something of a battle against the odds. <sighs> okay, so we've got to run over the frets again with marker pen. And I'm going to use the medium size, they're not exactly jumbo, they're sort of medium-ish. And I'm going to use these to uh, um, use marker. mark the frets so that as I use the Stuart recrowning tool, um, I'll be able to see how much I'm taking off and what I'm not. Uh, right. Medium size. So, yeah, to, so in, in flattening them, I put a flat edge on them, a flat top on them, and we don't, I'm going to put it down here so I can see a bit, and we don't want the, uh, we don't want the, the fret to be flat, but we also don't want to lower it any by reshaping it. So the marker pen is a very good guide to let me reshape the fret. And as long as I keep a thin strip of pen still on top of the fret, uh, I can tell that um, the fret is still the same height, it hasn't gone down any further. Now this one's got a little chip on it, which is, I have to say, could well be a ding of some sort, rather than just where somebody's bashed it. The problem with this is I, I cannot take it down because we'll, we'll kill the rest of the frets for a piece of damage like that. Um, a single piece of damage that's deep can really push you to have to refret the whole thing. People often talk about partial refrets. Um, the, the amount of trouble I find to put one single fret in and then get that fret to the same level of all, as all the others without costing a ton of fret metal in all the others to bring them all to get down to the same height together. I, I find if you're going to spend that kind of time, you might as well put a whole set of frets in and then that way you've got a brand new lease of life for another 25 years or whatever. So it, I, I don't, I hate spending a lot of time or customers money on something which even when I finished will be well past its midpoint of its lifespan like frets. So this one, uh, it is a ding by the looks of it um, and it's damaged, somebody's bashed something into it and there is no real way around that. We've done some, taken some off it. I'll do my best with the sandpaper to smooth it so it won't feel sharp, but it's a, a chance that it will still be, you know, you'll still be able to feel it when you're bending notes. But the good thing is you won't probably won't feel it much because you'll be bending notes up you know, from the middle upwards more than you might typically be doing it around the nut. So if of all the places to not get on your nerves with a ding, that's probably the best place for it. Um, but that's a, that's a piece of, I expect that's a piece of user having the damage somewhere in the past. So this one has been hit on very hard before this breath. I can feel it um, and I can see it. It's a great big flat spot on this treble side particularly. Um, but also on the fair, fair bit on the bass side. Um, but overall, not the worst frets I've ever come across. Um, and it'll still feel quite good to play afterwards. So it's worth, it's, it's not a sort of, it's not a fretless wonder by the time we've finished, which some guitars are in danger of being. One of the things I've always tried to stress to a customer is, for me, a, a prerequisite for doing, to, to making it worthwhile to do fret leveling, is that there has to be at least 50% of the fret life remaining. Um, you know, I don't think it's, it doesn't make economic sense to, uh, 
to start at half life and uh, do some fret leveling and, and give the guitar back at you know a third life or a quarter of the fret life left but with lovely level frets um, it's just it feels like a false economy so I would always say look if you're going to spend 125 quid on my setup um, why not spend 200 and get another 30 years of life out of a brand new set of frets because that's what I charge for a full refret which includes all the components of the setup as well um, so it, in, in a sense it just it, it ends up being a hundred quid more for a brand new set of frets which to my mind makes it a, a better proposition really if you're going to if you're going to invest money in it at all and if you, you're going to live with it and play it um, personal call, a judgment call for every individual, but that's, that's kind of my advice. Don't, don't be putting a lot of money investment into it if, uh, you know, if it's going to end up quite flat level by the time you're done. Okay, so that was a, a clean of the frets and the marker pen, most of the marker pen, um, but also getting rid of some of the grease or you know, original owner's DNA from the uh, guitar as well. So that's part of the nice process of giving it a refresh. Um, that's been buffed and polished. This end could do with a little bit of light around. Um, give it some grime and dust. Give it a bit of a fresh up, freshen up. Right, so the next part of this, um, in a way the, the hard bit's done, I'm just feeling this, yeah, that's a, somebody banged the guitar on it's probably face forward on the string is quite a common one. Um, okay, so um, the, the, the game now is to mask off all of these frets. Uh, and then polish out up to a shine and then I'll put the electrics back on and we'll be nearly done just a, a matter of testing it out. Um, having moved this back um, I'm, I'm looking at the these there's not a lot of travel in, in the forward direction I hope it's not too far back it's difficult to do it when you move it back because you sort of avoiding the original holes as much as possible so you, you can actually uh, get the thing get the thing to bite and, and stay firmly in the in the wood but it should be all right so um, what I'll do is I'll go off camera come back when I've done this polishing out and um, we'll be into Re oh, refitting the actually I'm not going to film refitting the electrics it's fairly straightforward I'm just going to put it in put it in hook it up um, and then we're going to restring it and intonating it and getting it ready finally so this should be okay to go out Monday uh, back to Brian so it's been it's been a while down here been looked after. Um, as I discovered one thing after another that wasn't right about it. But hey, that's the way it is. You can't know that from the outset. So as we get down here, we're going to need to cut some smaller bits. So I'll do it off camera. Right. Um, and I'll come back with the cameras on when I've got the... I've got now run out of hooks. When uh, come back when I've got a new strings ready to go on, I'll be... Ready to do that. Hello. Right. We are back after all of that. We have put it all together, cleaned it up, polished out, um, reprofiled, polished out, prep. So now it's time to fit our nines. And um, through the back. 
this has been quite a long haul <laughs> as I know you know so I'll be fingers crossed it's where I want it to be any minute now I mean, we've, got it, we've got it sort of rescued from the, the jaws of death in a way it was destined for the skip really um, you know, in, in just putting it together there I've replaced the ground wire to the claw and I've replaced the um, uh, um, jack socket wire as well which was a bit short so I made it longer so it was more to put through not so marginal okay so Next things coming up on the bench in Real Love Guitars. I've got three acoustics. I've got the Washburn down there. I've got a Takamine uh, at home along with a Gibson acoustic. Um, of the three guitars I've got, the two old ones I play like a dream compared to the Gibson. The Gibson feels awful. Uh, it's just incredible how badly it plays. Right, let's get the D on first. Now this is, these are these, um, what do you call them, uh, easy lock tuners. I don't actually use the easy lock functionality, so I go in the lowest, the lowest of the holes personally. I don't rely on that push it through once, pull it through the other way thing, simply because uh, it encourages you to do something um, which I think is risky and it doesn't, it actually doesn't, you can run the risk of it not grabbing the string you kind of think it does. So I would rather do it my traditional way, which is back one fret over the loose one. And as it comes around, go under the loose one and pull the loose one up out of the way. And then we've got sort of a little locking. That, that's okay. Um, and we'll do the G at the same time. So through, pull back one fret. Hold it tight over the loose one, then down under the loose one as the loose one comes back around. And then the regular ones. So just just putting on the, on the low one of the two holes on the post keeps it a nice angle. Uh, oh, hang on, over over the loose one to begin with. Come along. And then under the loose one. And it keeps it, the angle is good. Now, I was just looking at behind behind the scenes. There is a little bit of room for the tremolo to move, but I don't think it's enough still, you know, even to get it to turn or to work smoothly the way I'd want. So I think we'll leave it as a, a, a hard tail. I think that's probably the best all round thing for it. Um, I'm just going to check the intonation. Pull it tight, pull it back one, lock it on over the loose one, under the loose one. And finally, the IE, the IE. Oh. Right, you just went pop. Ow. Right. Let's just 
put these in a little bit. So we'll take a note. So that's my first tune up. Tune up? Let's just do a check now. Oh, I can. God, bang, crash, one up. I'm going to have to move that out of the way because I can't reach down on there. Just on the mark, that's good, it'll do. Right, well I'll come back to that in a minute, but the first thing we're gonna do is stretch out the strings. And you're gonna to need to grab hold of them and push and pull between thumb and forefinger. I'm a bit on the injured side at the moment, so I really can't do this very well. There is a diff, I do have a string stretcher device, but actually, you know what? I found it broke more strings than doing this did. So I gave up using it. So this is my preferred way. You just need to do it enough times to stretch out all the slack from your strings. And, oh God, my poor old thumb. I can't stress enough how hard you have to work this to make it do what you need it to do to get rid of all the slack. We, we, it's too tempting to think that we just, um, we just do it a little bit and then it's done and that's it. Actually a lot, but in fact, you have to work really hard. So I'm going to, before I stretch again, I'm just going to double check some settings here because things move while you're doing other things. Things get higher, like so. For example, that's a little high at that end. There's me. Oh, there we are. So a little bit high on the high E. 1.2 ish, 1.5 ish, 1.3. So that one's a fraction low on the G, but a tad high on B. So that should be good. 1.2, 1.4. G is about 1.4. Let's go down, bring up the D. You can usually see it with your own eyes. So, A is the only one that's low now. And you can sort of see the, uh, you can see the shape of the radius tracking across the strings anyway. So I'm gonna, rather than do the thumb and forefinger thing, I'm gonna use a bit of brute force here. Ah, oh, my fingers are still hurting a lot. Be 
careful not to break the damn screen. Oh yeah, let's plug it into the tune at the moment. Okay. My fingers getting in the way with plasters. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give it a little bit more pulling in the pulled strings department and then I'm going to call it a day because this is done. Um, now, let's just see. I don't know if this will really work with we, we may just have enough room in here for um Brian to use the downward shimmer um in fact we probably have just enough room so let us let us we might just get away with it now let us slack off the not slack off slack off these screw oh my god these are then, oh dear lord. Mm. Right. Okay. I didn't think it was really important since we weren't doing anything with these, but since those are now showing up as completely bent, God only knows what happened to all of this. Uh, the claw itself doesn't really need. Um, doesn't really need adjusting or changing it's just what it is we've wired it up already what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the slap these off and just let the pressure off the bridge for a minute and then we're going to replace these tremolo claw screws one by one because they're i didn't realize that they're completely bent beyond belief oh god what an absolute mess that is I'll just, I'll just get this bent thing out of here and replace it with a decent one. Bent as a nine bob note or whatever they used to say. These things are pretty nigh on impossible to work around. The claw is, the tremolo claw is an absolutely idiotic design anyway, um, simply because you can't actually get your screwdriver in there. <sighs> so this is very loosely attached, so I don't even know how whether this can work being not very far in, um, even with these nice new screws. But let us see. What I'll have to do is I'll have to put these screws in a fairer distance in, but I think we'll we'll take off one spring and see if we can use it as a two spring gentle forward only tremolo. Well, that's down only I should say. So let's get that hooked up to there. Feels all right, a little bit of, I mean, it doesn't go that far, but it'll do for now. So let's just, let's just get this tied down flat. There we go. I think we 
we'll get yeah we'll get a downward shimmer out of this which is pretty good actually better than i had hoped for i'd kind of written off the opportunity to have a tremolo at all but making sure okay okay so there's not enough springs on there to keep that down so what I will do is I will, I will send these screws further in which is good because they're not really grippy anyway so it's better that they're further in to uh, hold tight and that will put more pressure on the springs which well just about lucky should give us that's not bad actually. Mm. I can live with that. Amazing. Okay, so a little bit of careful stretching, nothing too crazy. And we'll go back and get our tuning stability. And we'll be done, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Suppose we could plug it in anyway. You know what? I'm quite, I'm quite pleased with that. Far better than I had hoped for. What with everything being all over the place, <laughs> that's the only problem. Damn. We can't get the we can't get to the adjuster. Yeah. I think we just have to live with it like that. Can we get to the adjuster? And uh, the only way we're going to get to the adjuster is to take the whole thing out. The only way you can get to the adjuster is by getting that stand higher up. And that requires the, there to be a gap at the back, which there isn't. No, I'm afraid not. That's a pain. Why can't we do that? We'd have to take the whole bridge off. We're going to tighten the adjuster. That's the downside, unfortunately. Um, do you know what? I had this. I'd leave it as is. It's pretty good. It's, you know, it'd stay in there. It won't fall out. But I think it's too much, too much to try and tighten it up because then you, you won't be able to get it out and it'll be stuck in there and so on and so forth. Right. Okay, so my intonation is good. I just checked that. I said it earlier on and checked it. Um, a little bit of stretching still to do. But that is pretty much it. Thank goodness. This is going back home tonight, ready to travel at the weekend. I don't think, I can't really play it, so I don't know whether it's going to be worth plugging it in, but. That blue thing is going to a new owner. JT twisted my arm a bit. He's been hankering after it for a while. I know, lusting after it. And I figured, you know what? I like it to be loved and played more than sitting around at home or in the studio. Uh, it's, it's great fun. But I don't play it enough. It's it's been up here, and it's either going to be at here or at home, and it's, it's sat here, not being played much. Only once in a while, and I thought, well, do you know what? Let it go. 
Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Now remember I've got great big things on my fingers. Sitting, sitting.
like about the Wilkinson pickups is they really are spanky. another day. <gasps> suffering with my poor little fingers my poor little fingers it's not it's not this guitar's fault that i had poor little fingers anyway um, thank you for putting up with me for this period of this guitar i'm just going to clean these little strings off prior to it going in its baggie and then we are ready to go back to its owner who i'm not even sure if brian's actually played this thing in earnest yet um who knows, but it may have just been straight from eBay and uh, never used. So this will be a first for him. But I can assure you, it wasn't going anywhere prior to this. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Oh, I'll just stick the, what's it on the back <laughs> cover? Got some new, some more new scratch plate screws. These are all new. All the rest are knackered. So let's have some. Then I think we're done for tonight. Go home, rest up. Now this has probably moved along, moved things out of shape a little bit. Yeah, no, we're still on target. Not that far up. Okay, that's it. Well, I'm glad I stuck with it because it's, it's definitely worth um, fighting for. I think these are great fun to play. I would happily play this one from here on inwards um, good budget uh, strat pickups the Wilkinson's they're really hyper stratty and with a fairly you know different sounding decent sounding different sounding um, humbucker in the bridge position you know, to give it that little extra edge that you know makes it stand out from the single coils um, one thing I'll just do is I will just give, uh, well, I don't need to do that, will I? I'll just give these one more turn, make sure everything's nice and snug so it doesn't go the way it did last time. These should be rock solid. In fact, they are. I can't feel any movement in them at all. Yeah, there we have it. Phew. Well, 
I'm very chuffed to have got that from where it was to where it is. That's actually very playable and what a, what a mess it was before. So it's a nice looking gu guitar actually, um, despite the fact that it's got the strange, uh, whatever those things are called, knots in them. I, you know, you don't really see it. I, I like that guitar now. It's, it's a nice thing. Lovely. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Acoustic guitars, a Pacifica, um, some more things coming as well. I can't remember what they are, but lots of different things.